Hi everybody. All right, welcome back. Today we're going to dive into John Donne. And I love John Donne. He's fantastic. He's a little bit later than Shakespeare. Um, and most of his poetry is about the kind of things that we as humans really do experience. Um, and the one we're going to read today, which is called Song, Sweetest Love, I Do Not Go. Um, because he wrote lots of songs, so you kind of have to use the first line to tack it on and know exactly which one we're talking about. Um, it's about the idea of being separated from a person you love. And you know that separation is coming, and what would you say to them? Okay? Um, so it's a real, it's something we as people can connect with. I'm sure at some point you have had to say goodbye to someone you loved, and you were going away or they were going away, and you weren't going to see them for a while. Um, or this could also apply to like saying goodbye to somebody because they're dying. Um, he, he compares that, that leaving to loss. So what we're going to do is we're going to read the whole poem through. It's pretty short. We're going to then go stanza by stanza. Remember stanza means a paragraph of poetry. And we're going to talk about what each stanza means and what he's saying in it. Okay. Um, and then you're going to go back into Schoology and do your discussion question. All right. Feel free to make notes. Uh, if you want to print out your poem or if you want to write on your PDF using Kami or just in your notebook or whatever is fine. Feel free to take notes as we go. And then you can, of course, use those notes when we do our test at the end of the unit. Okay. So open up your PDF of Song, Sweetest Love, I Do Not Go by John Donne. And here we go. Sweetest love, I do not go for weariness of thee, nor in hope the world can show a fitter love for me. But since that I must die at last, tis best to use myself in jest, thus by feigned deaths to die. Yesternight the sun went hence, and yet is here today. He hath no desire, nor sense, nor half so short a way. Then fear not me, but believe that I shall make speedier journeys, since I take more wings and spurs than he. Oh, how feeble is man's power, that if good fortune fall, cannot add another hour, nor a lost hour recall. But come bad chance, and we join it to our strength, and we teach it art and length itself or us to advance. When thou sighest, thou sighest not wind, but sighest my soul away, when thou weepest unkindly kind, my life's blood doth decay. It cannot be that thou lovest me, as thou sayest, if in thine my life thou waste, that art the best of me. Let not thy divining heart forethink me any ill. Destiny may take thy part, and may thy fears fulfill. But think that we are but turned aside to sleep. They who one another keep alive, ne'er parted be. On your initial reading, that might sound kind of overwhelming and kind of complicated. John Donne is a complicated poet. He's worth the work, though. All right? And we're going to go stanza by stanza. He's worth the work because he uses two major things. And you're going to see these in every one of his poems, and it's going to come up in your quiz, and it's in your PowerPoint, et cetera, et cetera. He uses conceits. Now, that is the poetic meaning of the term. It doesn't mean to be like high and mighty, better than you. Conceit in poetry means a weird comparison, like a metaphor or a simile that you would never in a million years compare with each other, but that really actually gets to the heart of something and completely makes sense. Okay? The second thing he uses are called paradoxes. We're going to see one here. And it's where an idea feels like it doesn't fit on the logical level, but you get into like the deeper emotional level and it does make sense. That's a paradox. And you've probably heard that word um, in science fiction. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go back to the top and I'm going to go stanza by stanza. Sweetest love. I do not go for weariness of thee, nor in the hope the world can show a fitter love for me. Okay, so he's leaving. 
the person he loves, right? Not because he's tired of them. And he's talking directly to them, calling them the, that means you. And it's like a, a beloved word for you. So he's not leaving because he's bored of this person. He's not leaving because he's hoping to find a better person out there for him. He's leaving for some other reason. And we never really get the reason. So it might be work. It might be, you know, an obligation. Whatever reason he's leaving, he, he doesn't really want to go, but he has to. And this person can't come with. Okay. And to finish out the stanza, he says, but... Since that I must die at last, tis best to use myself in jest, thus by feigned deaths to die. Okay, so we get that he's leaving. Why is he suddenly talking about death? All right, this is a conceit. He is comparing the idea of leaving someone you love, going on a journey and coming back to them, to dying, therefore you leave the person you love, but you meet them again in heaven. Okay, now you're going to see as we read through John Donne's poetry, he is a deeply religious person. And so we're going to see religious concepts throughout every single one of his poetry. And the idea that death and separation are like a journey in separation, and that in both cases you come back together at the end, either in heaven or in person, that shows up a lot. So just kind of keep that in mind. All right. And so what he's saying here is, look, someday I'm going to have to die. So let's use this as practice. Like feigned means fake or um, false. So let's use this like a false death, like a practicing death. So I'm going away and coming back and we're going to pretend that it's kind of like I'm dying. Um, so that, we, but we know just like when I die, we're going to be back together again. Okay? Now, let's look at the next stanza. Because that's not particularly comforting, is it? Like, hey, let's pretend I'm dying. All right, if you were leaving someone behind and you were like, uh, let's pretend like this is like I'm dying, they would not be cool with that idea, right? This next idea is kind of better. He says, yesternight the sun went hence and yet is here today. He, personification of the sun, hath no desire, nor sense, nor half so short a way. All right. So the sun, isn't yesternight a great word? It means yesterday night, but it's just an easier way to say it. So last night, the sun went away, right? The sun set. And yet, look, here he is again today because the sun sets every day and comes back every day, right? Another cycle. Um, but the sun doesn't do it because he wants to. The sun doesn't do it because he feels like this is an important thing to do. The sun just comes back because the sun comes back, right? It's just a natural cycle. Then fear not me, but believe that I shall make speedier journeys, since I take more wings and spurs than he. Okay, so just like the sun comes on a journey, this is another conceit. Just like the sun goes on a journey, I'm going on a journey, and just like the sun comes back, I'm coming back. But... I'm going to come back faster and I'm going to come back like swifter and with more reason because I have more wings. He doesn't literally have wings. He has like the ability to travel and spurs. Um, spurs are those things on the boots that cowboys wear. They hit their horses with them. It makes the horse go faster. Um, and we use it metaphorically like my love of cake spurred me on to get home and eat some cake. So he has a reason to want to come back, unlike the sun, which just comes back because it comes back, right? So he's going to come back even more reliably than the sun because he has good reason and he has the ability to come back to her. Okay. Now, let's go to the third stanza. Oh, how feeble is man's power that if good fortune fall, cannot add another hour, nor a lost hour recall. Okay, so feeble means weak. And man here is not just a specific man, it's humanity. And he's like, humanity's big weakness is that if we have a really good day or a really good hour, a really good event, we can never go back and experience that again. We can't rewind time and go back. 
right? It happened, it was great, but it's over and you can't go back again. But come bad chance and we join to it our strength and we teach it art and length itself or us to advance. Okay, so in contrast with the fact that, um, you know, a good thing happens once and then it's over, a bad thing that we know is coming, we dread and we worry about it and we think about it and, you know, we let it consume us. And it eats up all our good times as well as our bad times because we're so worried about the bad thing that may happen. Okay, so good stuff, gone in a second. Bad stuff, we let it kind of take over our lives. All right, next stanza. When thou sighest, thou sighest not wind, but sighest my soul away. Oh, okay, this is where it gets good. So these two people are so deeply connected that he's saying, Listen, when you sigh, when you go, what comes out of your mouth isn't breath. It's not wind. It's my soul. Yeah. When thou weepest, unkindly kind, there's our paradox, my life's blood doth decay. Okay, so when you cry, you're not crying water. You're crying his blood. Now, if that sounds biblical, yeah. Okay, so... These people are so deeply connected that basically like they're sharing a body. They're sharing a soul, right? They're so interconnected that when she sighs, it's his soul that comes out of her mouth. Now, the unkindly kind part, the paradox, says like, I know that the reason you're crying and sighing is because you love me, but you're also hurting me by doing it because you're giving up part of me. Okay, which again, unkindly kind doesn't make sense like logically, but it makes sense emotionally. That's your paradox. It cannot be that thou lovest me as thou sayest, if in thine my life thou waste, that art the best part of me. So you can't love me the way you say you do if you're wasting me by sighing and crying all the time. All right, now last stanza. Let not thy divining heart forthink me any ill. Destiny may take thy part and may thy fears fulfill. Okay, divining means like seeing the future. And forthink, you know, for means like before. So he's saying, look, don't think about bad things that might happen to me because, you know, that's putting it out there in the universe and it might make them happen. And, and then your fear might come true. And then he ends with just such a great image. Okay. But think that we are but turned aside to sleep. They who one another keep alive, ne'er parted be. All right. So he's saying, don't think about all the bad things that might happen to me. Don't think about how far we are apart. Think that we're sleeping back to back. And... You can't see me, but I'm right here. I've got your back. I'm right behind you. I'm, I'm right. I'm still with you. We're just facing opposite directions, which not only is deeply comforting, right? But also really clever because if he's traveling, right? All of this is about circular travel, leaving and coming back, leaving and coming back, right? The idea that the earth is round which they completely understood by this point, right? We're in the 1700s. The idea that the earth is round, and if he's like in India somewhere, which is very probable, right? The English colonial, or if he's America somewhere, right? He's probably literally halfway around the globe to her. So they are kind of back to back, right? It's so good. Okay, and then he ends with, they who one another keep alive, ne'er parted be. We keep each other alive, so we're never really apart. We're so deeply connected. That is a comforting image. That's the sort of thing that if you have to say goodbye to somebody, you want to hear, right? And it comes back to the idea of like this being a fake death 
but it doesn't matter because we keep each other alive. It's just so good. This is why I like John Donne. All right, so you're going to go into Schoology. You're going to do your discussion question on song, and you can tell me what you think about the poem. All right, and I will see you back here again for our next poem. Until then, bye, everybody.